So we just got called out on this one here, 1998 Olds 88. And their complaint is, if we can get this on camera, that, there we go. Emissions results, we have the cat not ready, EVAP not ready, the O2, we need GR, we're not ready. It's not where we're at right now, but we'll get to that in a moment. One of those, or two of those have already run but they cannot seem to get all the monitors to run. So I just started the vehicle now. I wasn't gonna pull out the camera, but uh, let's see, we're in for about a minute and a half already. It started off with the intake air temperature and the coolant temperature at the same degrees. So we both started at 81 degrees. And we're gonna watch just to see what the engine coolant temperature actually does. That's one of the things I wanna see what the fuel trim does, and I wanna see what the oxygen sensors are doing. I can see the downstream O2 sensor already, is sitting there at point 0.1 not a good sign could be an issue but I'm not gonna call that just yet I also see let's see here do we have engine rpm and 900 rpm mass air is reading about seven grams almost to six and a half to seven grams so a little bit higher than I'd like to see but again that rpm though may come down a little bit so we'll see We're at 126 degrees on the coolant temp, 127. Looking pretty decent so far. As far as engine time to warm up. Hmm. Now that one there. I think I like the graph display a little bit better for this. I do not like the fact though that it auto scales. I think that's a stupid feature they should do away with. The mass air as you can see is starting to go down a little bit now. We're down to about 6 grams as the engine RPM drops. Down to about 8.75. I'll probably drop down a little bit further than that. My guess is it's probably going to be somewhere between 750 to 800. And at that point there, our mass air should be reading about 3 point, well, probably about 4 grams per second. Fuel trims respectively though, I do see 10% on the long term fuel trim. Short term looks like it's pretty stable. But again, I do not like that rear O2 sensor. We know it's warming up, but as you can see, the front is already active. Although, kind of hard to determine what you actually have doing. Numbers, and there goes the phone again. Because that's what happens. So I apologize to people wearing headphones. But let me put that do not disturb back on. Here we go. So coolant temp is up to about 162 already. I don't think we really see any kind of problem there. What I'm going to do though is that cat is one of the ones that's actually not ready. I'm going to give it a little bit of steady throttle. Try to bring it up to about maybe, let's say 1500 RPM. Kind of hold it there for a moment. Curious to see what that rear row two sensor is doing. What we expect is, if a cat is working properly, we want to see that start to stay above that above the four point or the point four five volts, which would indicate that all the oxygen is being used up. Now, it's not what I'm seeing at all here. Let me bring it up just a little bit higher. I'm keeping an eye there. I see my fuel trims are getting a little bit better as I raise the RPM, but we're at 2,000 RPM now. But that downstream O2 is just kind of there. However, it responds to when the, when the RPM jumps up a little bit, if you notice that. So let's see. 
we should be getting that cat good and hot that rear row 2 sensor if the heater circuit is working should have already brought that up to temperature mm-hmm notice how we're staying lean at all times now as I'm giving a gas though which I did not do earlier because I was as you can see the car was cold I am noticing something about this car that may be kind of hard to try to let you guys hear but if you can hear that there is an exhaust leak and I do not know where that exhaust leak is but I do know that it's responding like an exhaust leak also on that downstream O2. So if we concentrate on that in a second, when I initially first give it gas, we should get a little bit of lean and then it's gonna get pegged rich. And then I think it's gonna drop and all the way straight back down to lean again. Yep, there it is. Pegs itself lean. It's picking up oxygen from outside. So is that enough? Well, overall, even though we're on a 98 here, our downstream oxygen sensor, even back then, did uh, it does add to the long-term fuel trim. Minimal, but it's definitely there. The highest we ever got here was 11.7. .7, so again, I'm not too concerned with that. But having it having it there, where the O2 sensor in the back would start to look like it, maybe uh, maybe it's not up to snuff and not working properly, will cause it to stop looking at things like cat. I mean, that's really what we're checking the cat with. We're checking it with the rear O2. This car was probably pre-oxygen storage capacity. It's, uh, I believe that this one here is going to look for more like an index switching ratio. Well, it looks like maybe the cat's starting to come to life a little bit here. Maybe. Maybe not. No. No, that's, that's definitely responding like, you know, they like it as a exhaust leak. So... That's what we're going to be looking for here, is finding out why this exhaust leak is causing that. Our coolant temperature is above the 207. So just to show you guys, wish monitors were not run. Oh, I went into data stream. That was silly of me. I don't know if it allows me to back out. Not yet. I'll go back. I'm looking for readiness mode one. Let's see what we get here. So we have our EGR, our cat, both not ready. And we also have EVAP not ready. So those are the three. So comparatively there, the O2 sensor monitor that had not run prior on, on the uh, failure sheet has run since then. But I believe what it takes to run that one is going to be the upstream O2 only. I don't think GM really made that part of their readiness testing. However, it does affect the ability to run the monitors. So I don't see anything else there that really stands out. We can go back into a full data list. Hundred and ninety-four degrees, calculated load is low enough, it's only at two point four, which it should be at closed throttle. We got only 90 degrees at the intake air temp, which is fine. And again, nothing really crazy there about the fuel trims. You know, that's not anything at all that I'd be too worried about. So, the very first step on this car is finding out what's going on with that rear row 2 sensor. Well, I do see the rear row 2 right now. If we go in there and we have expand on that one. That's the other thing. If I've selected it, why don't I have? Why do I have to? Oh, anyhow, I'll refer that over to them. I think if you select it and then you hit the expand button, I think it should uh, automatically expand just the PID that you actually selected. But for a moment there, again, it looked like the cat was going to come back to life. But again, it has to consume that oxygen. It has to use that oxygen to cause the catalyst effect, where it's going to break it down into other molecules and we should have very small amounts of oxygen that are actually escaping through the exhaust and instead like that right there that's what we would expect I believe what we're seeing here is we're looking at it consuming too much oxygen and it can't keep up it's an older car it's got some miles on it 
not terrible miles. Only 77,000. Yeah, can't seem to get the focus on that display. There it is, 77,990. So, this one here, we're going to find out where the exhaust leak is on it, and then address that exhaust leak first, and then I can start to do a catalyst efficiency test, and I'll take it for one more ride and see what's actually going. Um, the EGR will also be using that rear downstream O2 sensor. So, see this? Bank 1 sensor 2, short-term fuel, not used. That's That's been a lie for years. <laughs> and yes, it's a lie. As they've as they've, things have gotten newer, we've actually found out a lot of information about how often they were actually using that, that rear O2 towards fuel trim. And again, there's, there may be a small vacuum leak here. Nothing crazy. I don't even think it's a vacuum leak at this point. Long-term fuel trim is already down to 2.3%. Yep. Interesting. We were at 10 a moment ago. Give it a little throttle. Nope. That said, we have a downstream O2 that's preventing this thing from being able to run these these final monitors. So sometimes it just takes uh, actually looking in there for a little bit of information. Now, I know some guy's going to ask about mode 6. I'm going to show you what happens on mode 6 and some of these older ones. And then I'll show you a difference in tools. Okay, so here's your tids and sids. EVAP canister loading test. It's great that they have them labeled, isn't it? But look at the units, though. This is the actual units. This is what the test, what it, what it tested at. So it says not available in units, not available in units. Zero was the EVAP excess vacuum test, which means it hasn't even run it yet. Forty is max. Look at the minimum here for EVAP excessive vacuum pass. A hundred on the minimum. The value was a hundred, but there yet there's no maximum. So, was it supposed to be above or below? It has to be above, right? Well, at 100, I'm not so sure I really trust that number. Same as the one below it. 79 for the minimum, the actual value was 79 for an excessive vacuum test. Now, EVAP weak vacuum fail test, we don't have a minimum number, but we do have a maximum. And if you look at that, that would be on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? If we were at, let's say we're, we, you know, our mid number there would be like 130. Right? Let's just say 130, or in this case, maybe 175. Um, if we had some kind of those numbers like that, normally what you'll see here is about a 130, if everything is good. A weak vacuum fail test. We may have that little vacuum leak that I mentioned before that, that was there, and now it's not there. We may have something going on with the purge solenoid. We can check into that. I'm more concerned right now that we're finding out why this cat won't run. Our value here, 0, 161. That means that that test hasn't even run yet. So it failed on the large test. It didn't want to run the small test. And then we have our O2, O2 sensor time to act uh, time to activate it. So value was 18, maximum was 50. Our time for actuation for the downstream, 21. Our maximum was 292. And then we have mass airflow sensor above expected with no EGR off idle. Well, you tell me if you actually trust that number, because I don't trust anything there. My minimum was nothing there, and my maximum is zero. So, I don't think that's an actual valid test. Um, much like the one below it for the EGR deceleration test, I think these test numbers that they have here are incorrect. Um, the idle catalyst efficiency test, I'm pretty sure it doesn't even run one on this car. <laughs> um, not for idle catalyst efficiency. Because, again, the uh, criteria would tell you that you're going to be driving at 50 miles an hour for a period of time. So, that's what I see here as far as the Mode 6 goes. Not very helpful. There may be something going on with EVAP um, here in New York, I will say. And it's not good getting past on anything, but it is a 98 Olds 88. Um, it only requires two monitors that can be... Let's see. Yep, two monitors can be not ready on this one. So... In this case here, if we got the catalyst to run, and EGR did not run, and EVAP did not run, we'd be okay. Now, obviously, if there's a problem with that, if there is a problem with EGR, I'd be expected to flag a code. Customer supposedly has been driving this car for three years and never had the monitors run. Well, I don't think that they've ever actually fixed the exhaust leak on this thing. 
And I also don't think they drive it enough. With 77,000 miles on a 1998. So this car may never even see the highway. We have the, uh, let's see, can I turn on the interior lights in here? Nope, there are no interior lights. Great, how about this one? How about the map light? We have the obligatory uh, seat pads that are in there. Kind of hard to see, but we have the seat pads that are in there. And I uh, think you might know where I'm going with that. If you don't, that means you're probably not working on cars every day. But, uh, you know, this is a car that doesn't really see the highway probably very often. Anyhow, that's what I got on this thing. We're going to find out where the exhaust leak is. Find out why that's affecting our downstream O2. And take it from there. I think that fixing this downstream exhaust leak and leaving the O2 sensor in there is going to be enough. Um, having that exhaust leak, I have a feeling it's probably going to be by, I think this one has a flex pipe. So, and that's after the cat. Let me think. I'm not 100% on that, but I'd have to go underneath there and take a look. It's been a long time since I've had one of these things up in the air. But, that's what I got. Just look over your data. Try to find the things that make sense. Try to find the things that don't make sense. Our downstream O2, if everything was working properly, we would be sitting above the at least the 0.45 mark. All right, some cars will actually ask you to have it above the 0.65 mark, but that's all in your service information and looking at the criteria. There you go, 16 minutes, much too long. Have a good night.